Hello world, yes this is Eric Knowles, I'm here with uh, my second talk uh, regarding uh, René Lalique. Uh, we left Lalique um, in my first talk in uh, Paris in 1900 and we see him again about three years later in this particular photograph. Now in the interim period Lalique's interest in jewellery design was beginning to wane um, due to the sort of plagiarism of his designs by other would-be jewellers and uh, certainly by 1905 when he set up his um, his new uh, gallery in, in Paris is very fashionable uh, Place Vendôme, um, his emphasis was beginning uh, to lean more and more to glassware. Uh, two years later, in, in, in um, 1907, he's invited by his neighbour, none other than this man, and this man uh, is Francois Cote, uh, the number one uh, perfume uh, designer, if you can call perfume design, perfume design, well I just did, um, but anyway, uh, um, Cote um, asked Lalique if he would design the embossed and gilt labels that were being applied to his glass bottles. Now his glass bottles were being made by um, the firm of Baccarat. Well Lalique said um, no, uh, either I, desire, I design the bottle and the stopper or I do nothing at all. So uh, Cote uh, said well you know okay Rene you go for it um, and he did. And he came up and in 1908, 1909 with this bottle. Um, now, this is quite special. It's this, you can see it's labelled there. It's, it's mottoed, if you will, uh, Le Fleur de Cote, the caress of Cote. And it's quite an, a revolutionary bottle in, um, in more ways than one. Because this bottle has been designed to be sold with the contents in, obviously. But it wasn't that obvious at that time because um, most people bought their perfume in very uh, pedestrian bottles and then actually um, using a small filter decanted it into their own personal bottle. Well the idea of having a bottle like, like this one uh, designed by you know France's number one jeweler in collaboration with that other giant of the French luxury trade uh, Cote well, it was a sure winner. Um, the design itself is quite interesting because the panel that you're looking at at this bottle um, is pure Art Nouveau. It's almost like a wood nymph. And uh, now this is 1909 and, and Art Nouveau uh, is very much a style that has been and gone, or as the French would say, it was now passé. Uh, but uh, Lalique is using it. Um, but what is interesting is the stopper. The stopper, actually, that's the second version. The first version had a ball stopper, but the second version you're looking at has got this very cubistic uh, design of opposing cicada insects. So um, it's a little bit of the past and the future when we look at a bottle like that. Um, but Lalique um, could not produce his own bottles at that time because he had to go and outsource and he, he made uh, made use of a Parisian firm long established in Saint-Denis uh, called Le Gras. And Le Gras uh, made these bottles uh, for him, uh, but Lalique knew full well uh, that eventually he would have to go out and buy a second glassworks, uh, which he does. Um, he leases initially in 1909, 1910 he buys the glassworks in a place called Cum la Ville which is not very far from Fontainebleau, about 50 miles, 50 kilometres rather, um, south of Paris. Uh, um, what uh, I want to show, here it is, here is the interior. Uh, I've been in lots of glassworks, um, glassworks and potteries uh, I make a beeline for whenever I can, um, but it's fair to say uh, that this uh, interior doesn't differ very much from an interior that you would find today uh, and um, probably obviously the machinery has become a little bit more sophisticated. But look at this, this is um, a, a cabinet, uh, present presentation cabinet that would have uh, graced the counters of those uh, perfume um, uh, shops that were selling Cote perfume. Uh, and what I find intriguing, and not so much the bottles, the bottles are, are quite, well, they're quite simple. Um, they're, they're bottles that would take any perfume and you identified it by putting a label on it. But it's that, it's that if you look in the lid, and let's have a look. Here's the detail of what you're looking at. Um, it is 
a gilt metal plaque which shows three rather sinuous, uh, nubile, whatever um, description you want to give these ladies, uh, but they're holding... They're holding these these bottles, and out of which the vapors are spelling uh, the perfumes of Cote. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you will see that it's actually signed Lalique. So um, that's a test of display. Um, Lalique is being given lots of um, more commissions uh, by Cote. Um, this one in particular, I think, is lovely. Nineteen oh nine. It's called Cyclamen. Uh, and this particular bottle is um, far more, uh, how can I describe it? It's, it, it? Again, it's quite nouveau. There's nothing particularly anything other than nouveau about it. It's, it's a fairy tale insofar as you've got these, these fairies which um, um, are on the shoulders of the bottle, but they're long uh, pen, pendulum uh, sort of um, uh, wings of of dense filigree, gossamer wings, extend way down to the base. Called Cyclamen. Um, it came with three different stoppers, uh, believe it or not. Um, and what is more important is the fact that it's got its original packaging, its original presentation box. Um, and let me tell you, when collectors find perfumes with their original boxes, and, and also when they've been sealed and they've got their original contents, um, it sets the pulses racing. So this is uh, one bottle that would find no problem um, in um, in finding a ready buyer. Prepare to pay pretty big money. Now, um, the next piece I want to show you, um, it reflects the fact that the success that Cote had with Lalique had all the other perfume uh, makers knocking on Lalique's door. And the, the people here uh, were Dorsey, uh, because this bottle, which is in a, in a black, polished black, quite a chic looking bottle, with these uh, sort of strange um, uh, figures uh, moulded on the corners, is sort of gives the impression that it could have been some sort of semi precious material like jet. Uh, but this is Amber Dorsey followed by this bottle. Now this is Rose d'Orsay, um, and um, this bottle is designed in 1919. And, and what is intriguing is that stopper. Have a look at that stopper. Now, the reason I want you to pay attention to it is that um, many, many years ago, when I was taking part in the Antiques Roadshow, I was working on the miscellaneous table that day. I'm either on ceramics or miscellaneous, but it was miscellaneous. And a lady arrived with a box, a metal box, well, let's say a metal box. Uh, it was just full of odd bits of metal, keys, coins, you name it. But, but in one corner of that box was the very stopper that you're looking at now. OK, and I could not believe my eyes. So I retrieved it very gently and I looked at it under my magnifying glass. And to my amazement, uh, despite being surrounded by all this metal, it was in mint condition. So I explained to the lady that this was, you know, it was special. And um, and I wrapped it in tissue and bubble wrap. I said, look, for goodness sake, do look after that because... I actually sold that same stopper um, something like about 10 years ago uh, prior and um, it uh, sold for £600 just for the stopper. Um, and um, I felt a bit cruel, lady. <laughs> I mean, what I'm trying to say is I bet I felt a little bit cruel uh, to that particular lady insofar as that this poor woman is now probably trying her hardest to find the actual bottle uh, uh, that forms the base, um, which could be a bit of an uphill task. So here's another, um, here's another bottle. Um, this is a square section with this beautiful frieze of two figures. And this is um, by the title of Elegance. It had a perfume called Elegance. Um, and um, Lalique is using all different shapes and forms. Uh, he's very, very creative, to say the least. Um, but for the ultimate, any collector of perfume bottles, especially a collector of Dorsey, would, um, would, would be very happy to see this 
um, this advertising uh, display uh, panel in their collection. It had a few nips and ch chunks out of it. I, I, you know, I started sales of uh, Lalit glass at my uh, my previous firm in uh, in London's fashionable Knightsbridge back in the late eighties and throughout the nineties, and uh, uh, I've never seen another since. And as you can see, um, it's uh, around about a foot in length or thereabouts. So um, as well as um, as Dorsey, um, I think the, the first people actually uh, to get their foot in the door with uh, La Ligue was Roger et Gallet. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, the actual bottle uh, and its presentation box, um, both designed by La Ligue. And you can see here that um, the actual uh, bottle itself is composed of uh, cicadas, on each corner, it's a panel form, uh, and the the title of the perfume was Sigalia. So this is um, 1912, and um, uh, next to that, is, or following up from it, is the image of this, um, and um, dating to a little bit later, around about 1912, um, is this. It's this is called Pacarets, and Pacarets makes great. Uh, emphasis on the actual stopper itself, um, where this uh, often referred to as a crescent um, or a tiara stopper, uh, moulded with uh, with daisy flowers. Quite a stunning design, I think you'll agree. The bottle by now is quite pedestrian. It's simply there as a mount, uh, but um, um, this just goes to show. Uh, to um, a certain certain degree, uh, the extent of Lalique's fertile imagination. And in part two of this talk, um, I'm going to be looking at um, some quite breathtaking examples. Uh, so do join me then. In the meantime, if you're able to make a donation, uh, even if it's just the pound, um, it's going to go to the Red Cross. Uh, they're going to make sure that it goes to all the right people. So in the meantime, um, Eric Knowles signing off from somewhere in the Chiltern Hills. And uh, in the meantime, once again, please look after you and look after yours. <laughs>